flower corn project, August 3rd, 2019. This is the second year that I've been working on this flower corn project. There's two rows of corn to my left hand side. The row closest to me is selections that I made in 2017 out of Cherokee white flower corn that I accessioned from the USDA. The opposite side is Oxbow white flower corn grex that I was received in a trade from Oxbow Farms. The two are offhandedly fairly similar. The main differences I can see so far are the Oxbow has a higher percentages of pink silks. The Oxbow flower corn was about a week earlier to germinate and I got a substantially higher percentage to germinate. And I would say that possibly on the average they are a little shorter, but not that different. One thing I will say is, I think on the whole, there is somewhat greater degree of disease tolerance. I'm starting to see a lot of disease, and I'm not a great corn disease expert, um, and I still see some disease. Like this is a leaf, I think this is northern leaf blight, and this is on the oxbow grex. And these are the Cherokee white flower. I'm not sure what this disease is, but whatever this is, this has a lot of it, and there's less on the or this business here. I know that looks kind of like thrip damage. There's less of this business here on the Oxbow Grex, although there's still, there's still some. But both of these corns, as you can see, are huge. Let me find one of these guys here to demonstrate. All right, my vertical reach is nine feet. I don't know if you can see, that's at least three or four feet above me. So we're looking at a 12 to 13 foot plant. All right. We have an ear here at the eight foot mark. And I have several ears that are placed eight feet high. As long as these corns don't lodge, that is to fall over. I mean, this, this is another ear. This is an eight foot high ear. This is great for deer or groundhog or raccoon protection. It's a good trait. And this is a good stocky plant good strong prop roots pretty excellent actually the next corn that I have in here it's not exactly a variety it's a selection out of some crosses that I made some years back between northeastern New England white flint corns and Texas white gourd seed this particular ear that these came from, the ear essentially was a white dent uh, morphologically, but in terms of its growth characteristics, it took after the Texas gourd seed parent. In other words, it was a late season corn with tall, strong stalks and showed some really good disease resistance. So this is a good example of one of these corns and it's really dark green and I see very little disease. These over here are the same corn. And going down here, very similar. These do seem to tiller quite a bit. Uh, these are all thinned down to one stalk, so that one's got four tillers. But disease resistance seems to be quite good. And these are sturdy stalked corns. Ear placement could be a little higher. This is placed at about four feet, but not bad. Final corn, which is the row opposite here. This is Cargill Caribbean Composite. This is not a genetically modified corn. This was a traditionally bred corn variety that was adapted to temperate climates with our day lengths, long days in the summer in particular. And it took Caribbean flint genetics. This is a highly variable corn. You can see we've got pink silks, we've got red silks, we've got white silks. 
But what I've seen from this is consistently, this is a medium height, very strong, stocky corn, really excellent disease resistance, very dark green corns and very uniformly single stalked, just basically no tillers ever. And I have a lot more of these in a different corn plot that I'm crossing with some other corns. Uh, this was also a generous trade that I received from Oxbow Farms and really excited to cross this. So what's happening here is I've detasseled the white flint times Texas gourd seed and I've detasseled all of the Caribbean composite and I'm crossing the two white flowers which are really similar in a lot of ways with these two. These little runts here are the result of a cross I made in 2017 between Papa's red flower and Cherokee white flower. I expected this F1 cross to be essentially intermediate in characteristics between these two varieties, but what I got was uh, very similar in terms of its date to maturity and growth habit and size to the Papa's red, although you can see by the white silks here, the kernels I planted were basically white with a very little pink blush. It was definitely a cross, but yeah, I expected it to be definitely show more of the growth habit characteristics of the Cherokee white flower, which as you can see is five times larger. So I've detasseled this as well, and I'm crossing this with the flower corns. The other year when I grew this, this was a extremely disease susceptible variety and also like all of the southwestern or high desert type flower corns they're terribly adapted to the eastern United States but I wanted to get the really nice red color so that's why I use this but hopefully I can get some other interesting colors out of some of this other stuff that is much better for this climate so that's the 2019 flower corn project update. I'd like to get another video made once I have this harvested and we can see what it looks like. Final thing here, in order to put this stuff in my main vegetable garden, I had to put up a deer fence, which we can see here. actually been super effective it is seven feet high quarter inch plastic mesh and I got a hundred foot roll of this from Amazon for $12.99 and I just uh, put some bamboo posts attached them to metal posts or pipes and tied it up and this has worked I did also use my standard my Lorganite sprinkle over the deer and you can still see some uh, melorganite residue and that's been at least a month since I put that on and I also spattered them with plant skid which is a animal blood derived product mixed with a sticker that stuff is ridiculous it broke my sprayer and I ended up having to scoop it out with a yogurt cup and splash it onto the leaves but between the fence and the deer repellents, I haven't had any deer damage. The deer really nailed my flower corn in 2017. So I decided to go to the effort to save my flower corn. So that all worked. Thanks for watching.